So I guess that your question must be, who is Gina Lola Brigida? Or where do you know her from and why is her face so familiar to you? Well, let me tell you that I first came across personally Gina Lola Brigida's work when I watched The Law by Jules Dassin or Beat the Devil by John Huston. And for those of you who are not familiar with those movies or probably have never even come across her name, Gina Lola Brigida was known for many years for being an international sex symbol. But underneath all of that, she had an incredible talent for photography. And this is what we're going to see in this video. So now that I have your interest, sit back, relax, grab a drink, make yourself comfy, and let's go straight into another video. Gina Lola Brigida grew up nearby Rome and she developed artistic inclinations from a really young age, eventually studying sculpture and painting. However, her undeniable beauty made her an incredible successful model, winning numerous beauty contests in Italy and across Europe, which then led her to minor roles in cinema. And Italian cinema was going through a golden period after World War II attracting several international movie productions, which were in great majority shot at the famous Italian studios Cine Città, also known as Hollywood on the Tiber. During this period, directors such as Federico Fellini and actors like Marcello Mastroianni became extremely influential and their collaborations rose to international fame. And it wasn't long until Gina Lolo Brigida achieved that same notoriety by participating in several important movies. However, a few decades later, in the 1970s, Lola Brigida's career started to slow down and she shifted her attention to other passions of hers, in particular photography. So I've taken a few polite guesses in this video and the first one would be that she is either a gearhead or she really loves cameras because she's seen in on many occasions with so many different cameras from Nikon F's to Yoshika TLR's to Hasselblad's. So my guess is that she really enjoyed photographing in different styles, different experiences and both in 35mm and medium format. And then the second guess is that probably she took a camera everywhere she went because she's seen throughout, you know, different years and stages of her career with different cameras pretty much, you know, during film productions, um, you know, at events, just casually enjoying a meal or just casually in the streets. So I really think that photography was definitely a passion she had for a really long time and that, of course, in the 1970s, she decided to dedicate herself to. And I wanted to say before we move further in the video that the photos that you've seen and the material that I've gathered is mostly based on two books that I found. In particular, this one, Italia Mia, which is a 1973 book that reunites um, a lot of photos that she took of everyday life in Italy. And honestly, this book smells as bad as mothballs, but it's as good as it can be. Trust me. And through this book, I came across this very passionate vision of Italy through the eyes of someone who didn't discriminate beauty. In fact, she has a really keen eye and her photos show a certain enthusiasm about the little details of everyday life, but above all, the eye of someone who is passionate about their country and eager to share that passion with the viewer. Her photography is honestly contagious and inspiring. And I conclude this not only from her choice of subjects, but the way she captures them. And in this case, I think she can definitely teach us a whole lot about composition and although this book reunites photos both in color and black and white, there's definitely something about her black and white photography that speaks volumes. 
She has a great understanding of composition, showing us virtually perfect compositions in a more classical sense with depth of field, perfect lines and proportions. But she also shows us compositions that isolate people in particular moments of their lives. And in that moment, there's a powerful detail or energy around their expressions, the way they move and their demeanor. And I feel that Gina Lollobrigida is definitely a photographer of the people. Not only because she knows how to capture them, but more importantly, she knows what they represent. The essence of life and its moments of simplicity and hard work, love and happiness, questions and desperation. And if you think this is all she has to show us, you're very mistaken, because she went on to work on seven more books. And some of these books that came to my attention was The Philippines, released in 1976, which chronicles her journey through the country, and another book I found, which I was also able to get a copy of, titled The Wonder of Innocence from 1994, where she creates images revolving around children and animals, which to me proves how versatile she was. And I guess that's been all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Links will be in the description for more information about you know, Lola Brigida, maybe some movies as well. Um, you know, if you want to acquire books or if you want to look up more of her work. And yeah, I guess that this is a really interesting series because I'm learning as much as you. I'm learning with you and your suggestions. And honestly, I had no idea that Ginola Brigida was her photographer. And honestly, finding out about this is really, really inspiring. And yes, I guess that it's been all for today. So I hope it was helpful that you enjoyed this video. And without further ado, I'm just going to say my goodbyes. So stay safe, keep shooting film, stay tuned for more. And I'll see you here for another video very soon. Peace. Peace.